and welcome to my channel. It's Rebecca, also known as a 4 kids at 147 and it's a time for a little bit of a whip and waffle as such. Um, I've done things a little bit differently today. So people did mention about possibly doing a whip and chat with a special diamond painting. They did mention one that I'd unboxed recently of a hand but I'm sorry I've already done that. <laughs> Um, I had already completed that. So I thought I would do this passport holder. Um, this is coming up in a recent, um, in a future unboxing um, that I filmed in preparation yesterday. Um, but I thought we'll do this because it does have some diamonds that are sort of a different type of shape. So um, for that, I will be using tweezers. Now, when I normally do a special diamond painting, I will actually just open up bag number one, tip it into my normal tray from Wilson 3D Designs that I use, and I will do number one all over the whole passport holder. Um, I will then pop the spares into to one of my little baggies for filing away later, and then I will do the same with two, three, four. But I thought I'd do a little bit of a different setup for the purposes of a whip and chat because then I do get to show you the variety or the different ways that I put diamonds on um, and depending on how long I chatter for will depend on how far up the passport holder I get. So what I've done is I've laid out a load of green trays of which I have gazillions and all I've done so far is just tip the diamonds into them but they each have a little sticker on the back um, with the corresponding number. So I've got one up to eight and then I've got A and C. So these are sort of from here is slightly bigger round diamonds and then there is some teardrop diamonds. So I do expect to use my tweezers at some point. And I have a passport holder that I'm sort of gonna start from one side um, and see how far I go, I think, basically. I think that's the way that I'm going to do it while I'm chatting. Um, and hopefully this will give you an idea of sort of how I work on special diamond paintings. I'm going to try and zoom in. I don't, I may zoom in a little bit more in a bit, but I sort of want you to be able to see what it is that I'm doing. So where should I start? Part of me wants to start with this number eight because it's big. Now, these are slightly bigger diamonds and others. Now sometimes I can still find that if my wax is quite fresh in the pen, these will still pick up with a diamond painting pen. And if they pick up with a diamond painting pen, then that's what I do. If it gives me that option, I'll do it. Now I have just refilled my pen with wax, so it's not really sort of the wax is still very flat it's not sort of formed the shape of a diamond inside the tip it's not sort of properly squished down yet so this is absolutely perfect for picking up this size of diamond which means i can do quite a few of this number eight without it giving me too much too many problems so let's do the couple down here and we'll sort of in fact i might do that row and we'll sort of work on this bottom section first and see how long it takes because i like to do these as evening projects and sometimes i can get two or three things done and sometimes i only get one it can be quite deceiving as to how much time one of these can take, um, mainly due to how many of the small diamonds are on it. You think you go in great guns and then you realise that there is a load of small diamonds to do. So I've sort of done the bottom corner in number eight. So I think number five is my next one. Now my, my stickers are bobbing over the top of my tray. Um, these are sort of normal diamond size so I know the pen will definitely work for these but the next one is teardrops which I don't tend to use the pen for I tend to go straight to tweezers on that one and that's partly because they do need to line up 
they do need to line up right. Oh, and I do have a drink with me, so I need to make sure I drink that. It's on my warmer, but... Mm. So I hope you are all well. I do thank everybody so much for their absolutely amazing comments. Um, that they post on every video, but there were some really, really nice and kind comments when I hit 10,000 subscribers. So I thank you all so much for that. It came around a lot quicker than I thought it would. Um, based on my sort of average extra subscribers I got each day, you can sort of work out when you think it's going to be. But it did seem to have a bit of a race. I actually went to bed with it being on um, 9,900 and something. And I, I woke up to it being over 10,000. So uh, it came around quite quick. It I didn't put a giveaway in the first video on that day um, that I hit 10,000 for two reasons. Um, one, the videos were sort of, the video was prepared, which, which most of them are, but um, the whole set up of how I was going to exactly insert the giveaway options you know and the password had been figured out but not actually actioned so that was something that I had to set up in my editing software I had to arrange you know the giveaway and sort out doing the voiceover for it because the mic I use for oh, the mic I use for voiceovers didn't want to work in my editing software. Then it normally works perfectly fine. Always used to, because I did do a lot of voiceovers for my scrapbooking videos. But on one of the updates somewhere, some things had a paddy and it wasn't working. So I had, you know, a, a bit of messing about to sort of get that new editing feature or new to me edit, way of editing um, all lined up. So that was one reason it didn't go in the video the, next, the same day. The second reason was the video that went up on that day was a storage video. So it was all different types of storage for, you know, from your diamond painting, from the moment you get it all the way through actually doing the diamond painting and when you've finished. And I see that as more of a long-term video. So it's a video that's linked on my website. It's a video that will, you know, be, be possibly or potentially more viewed for the years to come. It will be a reference guide for people um, new to the channel and not new to the channel. Um, it will be a reference guide for them. While I'm waffling, I'm going to do number four and then we'll do the teardrops. Um, so yeah, because it's more of a reference video, I didn't want a giveaway to be in that type of video. For the purposes, I don't want a year down the line somebody to message me about the giveaway tab not being available um, or something along those lines. So it's easier not to put it in that type of video and to keep it in my general videos. So my unboxings, my kitting ups, my kitting downs, more so than my tips, tricks and, as I say, longer term videos. Now, I know people do go back and watch them and that's fantastic, but there is a higher volume of people that will go back and watch a storage video compared to a kitting up or a de kitting video, especially when there's always a lot more recent ones of kitting up and de kitting, especially the amount of kitting up and de kittings that I seem to have going on at the moment. I feel as though I'm constantly finishing a diamond painting that needs that needs something doing with it. Um, so yeah, that's the reason it wasn't in that video, but it did go in the unboxing video on Monday. 
So well done to all of those that entered that one. There was also a giveaway on my Minions video where I kitted that up. So that was giveaway number two. Do keep an ear out for giveaway number three. It will be coming extremely soon. Very soon. Extremely soon. Very soon. Sounds better. Uh, it will be coming very, very soon. And if you go to enter a giveaway and the giveaway tab is not on the website, then more than likely that giveaway is ended. So do check the timestamp for when the video was posted. The giveaways are only open for 24 hours. We do have loads of entries. I'm doing another one that's slightly bigger. I will do the teardrops in a minute. Um, we do have loads of entries within those 24 hours. So I feel that that's, you know, it's still a fair way to get to everybody. I know everybody can't listen to a video each day, but there is 10 giveaways on YouTube for hitting 10,000 subscribers. So there will be a lot more chance for people to um, enter. There will be loads of chances for people to be able to catch a video and enter. Um, we have had winners so far. Um, they have all been contacted. So all the winners so far have been contacted and they have all responded. So I've had, oh, that one's slightly smaller than the rest of them, so I'm gonna take that one out. Um, I have had parcels so far. We did have a, I did have a Facebook giveaway as well on the Facebook group as an extra um, giveaway. And so far I've had giveaways go to um, Israel. There is one on its way to Israel. There are is a giveaway on its way to the UK. There is some in the UK, um, and where else? Oh, the Chris Christmas Eve video did go away to the Netherlands. So we are starting to touch other countries as well which is amazing there is no no information taken on the giveaway tells me what country you are in I will post to any country and it is purely luck of the draw and um, I know I do have a lot of UK viewers so I think that is the reason I have had a couple go to the UK but I also know I have a lot of American viewers so I'm expecting one of those in the upcoming days. So if you're from America, all the best. I'm hoping um, you get a giveaway soon. It's really exciting though, finding, waiting for the email back to find out where people are from. Okay, so I'm gonna do the teardrop ones now. Now for this, I do use my tweezers. I do like these tweezers from Evermoment. Um, there are some that you can get that aren't quite as sharp. Um, I've not particularly used them only because I'm not actually sure where my set's gone <laughs> but I do like the metal tweezers if you can however all tweezers will do it and quite often when I pick so I'll pick one up by the big part of the teardrop and then depending on which angle it's been in the tray will depend on where it goes so this one for example I've picked up the opposite way so for this one, I don't have to turn the passport holder as much to put it on this side. And I'll sort of keep picking them up and I'll see if I can do it without moving it. But quite often, I will find that I'll just have to move. I move the passport holder to suit rather than trying to twist my arm round too much. Let me move the pen out of the way. Let me move this further up so that I'm I can get away with 
twisting this passport holder around. Of course, with a big diamond painting, or with a maybe a 30 by 40 diamond painting, it will, of course, take a bit more room to move it around. But the idea is that I just pick them up from the, the way the tray gives it me. I don't want to be messing about too much. And sometimes I will pick a diamond that's facing the way my passport holder already is, especially when I've got so many in there. I will try and pick and choose the way I want it to be. So I want one facing the other way. And that's so that I can do this one here. But then I want them facing that way so that I can do these. There's another one. How pretty are these? Um, and I'll just keep going around all that is the same diamond. Let's say normally I'll do this on the grand scale. So I will unpack, for example, number. I normally work in number order. So all these big ones tend to be my last finale. I tend to have done all the small ones at this point because quite often companies will number it and the numbers of the big ones will be at the end. Not all companies do, but most companies will have the bigger ones as sort of extra packets. So I always tend to do those last. I feel it just gives, it gives the, you know, the, the item that you're doing, ooh, whether it be a page or a passport cover, whatever it may be, it gives it that extra little bit to a normal diamond painting gives it that extra ta-da to have something a little bit different mixed in with it so i quite like doing these at the end but i also quite like this way of working with them all sort of set up and i can especially if you've not got as much time because you could if you did manage to finish all of this you could just cut that piece of plastic off or still just re-overlay the plastic and not worry about picking up any bits on your diamond paint. Okay, so that's all the C's in this bottom quarter because this whip and chat is getting away from me. Um, so I think we're just gonna be working on this bottom corner and I have sort of done this full part in this circle just because, because I did. Okay, number three, It's a lot more diamonds in this one. So I'll give it a shake to get them flat. And then because of the size of the tray, I'm gonna tip them down a bit so that I have a bulk here and I'm gonna work on this. And then what I'll do is I'll tip it down again to fill in the gaps and then tip it back again. Keep doing that. But there is quite a few of this number three. So let me, Get ready and what I'll do is I'll zoom you in more for this one. 10,000 subscriber giveaway number three. To be in with a chance to win a box of diamond painting goodies, head over to my website, 4kidsat147.com. Click on the tab titled giveaway and enter the password waffle in all lowercase when prompted. You will then be able to fill in a form with your details. Submitting that form will enter you into the giveaway. The giveaway will be open for 24 hours from when this YouTube video was posted. All the best to those that enter. Oh, wrong way. <laughs> I'll just save my, I've just saved my memory card to stop it flashing on me. So if I move those up a bit, there we go. So hopefully you can see a little bit more what I'm doing there while I'm just working on the standard ones. But I find even though these do have a coating, so the ones I'm working on at the moment have like an iridescent coating. Sometimes I have found, depend, it seems to depend on the company, but sometimes I have found 
and it either doesn't like picking these sort of AB type diamonds up, the wax, or it can feel as though it's leaving a bit of residue from it or taking a bit of the residue off. This set seems fine and whether that's because I've got fresh wax in my pen, I'm not sure. Um, but I do have another pen. Let me see, is it here? Is it in my craft room? I'm not sure. I'm hunting through all my pens. I'm not seeing it. No, I'm not seeing it. Um, but I do have a pen that has, when it, it's for nail art, so it has a very, very, very thin silver tip on the end. This isn't focusing. It has an extremely thin silver top, like it's it's much thinner than this on the end of it. Um, though this is an everlasting tip, but it has, it's even smaller than that on the end of your normal diamond painting pen. And on the other hand, it has like a cone and the cone is is glue. Um, it, it's like a wax, but it seems to be a little bit stronger. If you're having trouble with AB di diamonds or rhinestone diamonds sticking, those nail art pens, I can't comment on the pencils, I've not tried those, but the pens where it has a very thin silver end on one side and it has a cone type shape on the top. They are really good with AB. I did find, I know on at least one painting that I did, I can't even remember if it was my Diamond Art Club or maybe it was a Timney Arts, um, that the AB diamonds only like to stick with that pen. They did not like the normal wax at all. So maybe that is something, if you do a lot with AB and struggle with the wax picking them up a lot, that could work. But I do find you do have to fill up your pen more or have the wax more tacky with an AB diamond than you do with normal diamonds. We'll see what it's like when I get to do my minions, my Diamond Art Club minions, when I get to actually start that, which it's all kitted up and ready. I'm just trying to finish the um, comparison diamond painting that I currently have on the go. I am currently on the second biggest size, I'm, which the kitting up video for is coming up this week. I'm trying to get that finished before I touch my minions. It's very hard because I want to touch the minions. Okay, so I'm just going to grab another tray. I'm going to go for number two because it's the, it's the first one in this row that's flashing at me. That's the reason I've gone for it. These are, I'd say these are more rhinestones. These are more of a gold colour right, oh these are really hard to tell which way is the right way up. I've shaken them but it's the same colour on both sides and it's really hard to tell which one. Okay I think I've figured out which shade. It's like two different shades of the same colour and I think I've found out which shade is the diamond the right way up. Quite a lot of these have landed upside down. Maybe I need to give the tray another shake in a moment. But these are like normal rhinestones. These are picking up. Um, I'm able to pick these up a lot easier than those AB coated ones. Now, the yellow AB coated ones do have facets on them. So you know where it's not a smooth dome, it's cut into they have that on them. Now the other sort of AB type coated or iridescent type coated that I have, which is number one that I'm going to do next, 
is a pure dome, it's a pure, it doesn't have any facets in it at all. It is just like half a circle or half a sphere. Um, I wonder if they will pick up as easy as these do. We will find out because it is very nearly the time for me to do that number. Finish up the last of the number two. Yep. So this one, I'm not sure again if it's going to focus, but this one doesn't actually have facets on it. This one, as I say, is just a dome. And these are as easy to pick up as rhinestones and normal diamonds. Even though they have a coating, they don't seem to be giving me any problems. It seems as though it's the ABs that are that have a facet or a faceted. Don't know what's the right word. Um, they're the ones that seem to give a little bit more hassle, a little bit more. They chat back a little bit more. <laughs> they chat back more than the others. They object. But these round ones, they're going on fine. Okay, so I've just got number six to do. Let me just have another drink of me brew. Have we done every colour? I should hope so. Now it looks like we have. I was checking according to whether it's still in a pile or whether it's been shaken out. That's how I can tell which colours I've done and which I haven't. But these passport covers I find extremely handy for storage, for cover sheets and for stickers. So you'll see when you see the unboxing of it. That is the reason that I may have purchased some more. It's purely for storage. I do seal these um, with a sealer because they are in constant use. I don't tend to seal paintings that I frame, whether they have glass or not. So the big blossom tree that I have in my front room is not sealed and it's not behind glass. Um, and it's been fine. It's been up there now for well over a year and it is completely fine. And considering the blossom tree that's in my front room is now also my daughter's bedroom because we switched the living room to the conservatory. It is doing so well considering it has two, well they're not even teenagers anymore, um, considering it is a bedroom for two young adults. <laughs> It is doing extremely well and is not showing any signs of any diamonds falling off or anything like that. I do check up on it every now and then. Check it's it's still alive and it's not it's not changed because if I take it down I've got no idea where it's going. So at the moment it's staying in there. We'll see, we'll see if that ends up changing. So nearly finished with number six. I just need to do that half to have finished my quarter. I think I've, have I just lost, is that one of those? Yeah, just throw that back in there. I shook the tray a little bit too hard. But yeah, if you haven't done a special diamond project yet, maybe consider when you're next shopping, picking yourself up one. Um, I, I just enjoy them for something a little bit different and if you can find a way to use them, for example for storage, even more fun to do. Okay, so that is a quarter of my diamond painting passport cover done. I hope that video was sort of helpful on, you know, how I do the sort of special diamonds. But do, you know, use a set of tweezers. Some kits do come with them. 
Um, some diamond painting kits come with them. Some people much prefer to actually diamond paint with tweezers. Um, if not, check your makeup drawer. You may have a nice set in there. Um, but if you try, you know, a set of the cheaper tweezers and you really can't get on with them, don't write off all tweezers until you've tried a nicer set. Ever moment, send them with their kits. I think who can send them with their kits as well. Can't remember if home fund do. I should know. I've had enough deliveries off them recently. I can't remember if they send them with them. Um, but if you can get hold of a nicer set of, of tweezers, it, it's definitely worth giving it a go for ones that give you aggro. You can use them for the smaller ones. So, for example, these ABs, if you're having a problem, you can still pick them up with the tweezers and try it that way to put them down if you don't want to purchase that, that pen with the cone end. Um, but it's up to you. Also, I know I did do an unboxing on these Everlasting Tips um, on Wednesday that I'd ordered just before Christmas. Thank you so much to you all for the comments. Um, when that video was uploaded, they were currently still on Christmas break. I thought they'd stopped Christmas break on the 11th, so I thought I was safe. I don't know whether I got it wrong or whether they moved it, but they are now reopened. Um, so their Etsy shop link is now working. And I may have ordered a load of full tip ends and I may have ordered some straighteners as well. Um, they did go out of stock but when I checked my sort of time zone watch, I noticed that it was four o'clock in the morning in Australia, roughly. Um, I was looking at um, Melbourne time, which is where my family live, rather than, or Victoria time, rather than up in Queensland, I think, where she's based. But I knew it would still be roughly, it might be an hour or so out, but it, it was early hours of the morning when I noticed they went out of stock. So I decided to be a little bit patient, um, but they have come back in stock. I have ordered some today, because this video is going up the day I filmed it. So I have ordered some today. Um, they are back in stock, they're 20% off at the moment. Shipping is extremely reasonable. Um, they aren't the cheapest tips, but the shipping doesn't take it completely out of the park. So I have ordered a few sets of full tips because I, that's the only thing I've noticed. These tips are amazing, but I have noticed that the plastic part that you have from your original pen, I do feel that give a little. So I've ordered the full metal and I've ordered some of the straighteners um, because I, I don't use multi-placers. I just, I can't get my head around them and I, I partly feel like it's cheating, but I do like a straightener on the end, um, especially when I'm working with squares, just needs a little nudge, or even if just a, a diamond needs a nudge, um, so I've ordered some of those as well. So if you clicked on the link and it was showing her shop was shut, it is open, it is 20% for an extremely limited amount of time. I think it may only be the rest of today and I don't know time zone wise exactly when. So um, if you wanna get the sale price, get ordering. If not, and it's something you need to save up and think about, by all means do it. But postage costs me less than three pound from Australia. So postage is extremely reasonable um, to ship. The investment is in the tips themselves. Anyway. I've definitely waffled enough. We go and get this video edited and up for you guys. Um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you all so much for your support. Good luck for any and all giveaways that are coming up. Um, and I will speak to you all again soon.